So the next layer of this is how the dividends themselves will affect the stock price. See, when any stock pays out a dividend, the stock will, the price of the stock will be reduced by the amount of the dividend. And that's because the new people who buy in are basically not entitled to the share price before the ex dividend date. So what an ex dividend date is, is this is the date that you would need to own the stock by to receive the payment in March. Now this is for BP, just as an example. So the declaration date is the date that they, uh, oh no, I have this new thing. Yeah, <laughs> I just found this tool recently. So the declaration date is the date that the dividend is declared. So they'll publicly announce on the 7th of November 2025 that they're going to pay a dividend of however much and on whatever date. But then this X dividend date is the, that's basically the deadline. So if you own stock before this date, then you're entitled to the dividend, which will be paid on the 27th of March. So if you don't own it before this date, if you buy it even on this day, I don't think you qualify. A lot of people say online just to play it safe, you should go for two days before. But there is a lot of people out there who basically try to plan their dividend investing by catching these companies before the ex dividend date. And then what will happen is they'll buy in the ex dividend date passes so they qualify, even if they've only owned the stock for one day they'll qualify for the next payment. But if the stock price stayed the exact same, you could just buy in and then as soon as the X dividend date is passed, you could sell it for even a tiny little profit and you'd get the dividend for nothing. So they drop the dividend, they drop the stock price by the amount of the dividend basically to reflect what the, the future price is going to be more accurately because they're going to have to pay cash from their earnings out as dividends. So if there's dividends coming in every day, that means that every day, in theory, you I will see stock prices dropping, even only by a small amount. But what this allows dividend investors to do is if they reinvest the same money back into the same stock, after receiving the dividend, they'll get a bit of a discount on it, which also will help compounding. But that's not what I'm doing. So, yeah, see, the overall value of the portfolio is not really a concern of mine. Anyway, it should be for anyone, but I'm not really going for that with this portfolio because I'm aiming for daily compounding cycles. So in theory, there should be every day one of them should have declared, or one of the stocks should have gone past its ex-dividend date, and then that will have dropped by the amount of the dividend. So I'm not sure how that's going to play out. Like the overall value I'm not concerned with, it's more discounts. Like it sounds kind of strange, but ideally I would like share prices to stay quite low so I can continue buying them. The next crash that comes along, I can only hope that I have cash on hand. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it would, uh, it's very hard to try and like visualize what would happen because there's so many stocks involved and there's so many different elements. Like it's quite easy in previous videos, the previous layers that I've put up, it's relatively easy to get like a good approximation of the amount of money you'll end up with but because there's so many stocks and i'm pushing them to balance at the moment but once that happens then it would just be whoever's red on the day so there will theoretically there will be discounts every day but because i won't be putting that dividend back into that exact company it's not exactly relevant to me but it is useful information for anybody out there who's completely new to dividend investing. I pretty much am as well. I started last year, but I know the basics, but not quite a lot.